Well, you guys wanted it, and I am here to deliver. If you guys haven't been on X Twitter in the past few weeks, well, for starters, you're probably happier than I am. But more to the point, you probably didn't realize that a little British cartoon called Horde Henry had been trending lately, and not for positive reasons. I say little like it's some unknown from out of nowhere. Horrid Henry is based on the popular Horrid Henry series of children's books. It had been airing for more than 10 years, totaling 251 episodes and five seasons. It even spawned a live action movie that not a single person on Earth seems to like. My Patreon Discord pointed this one out to me. I took a look, and honestly, I'm surprised that it took to the tail end of 2023 for anyone to suggest the show to me. With what I watched, this would seem like one of my most requested shows of all time. Cause, y'all caught a ripe one. This show is bad. A-level bad. One of the worst that I have ever seen. People told me that it was like another bad British cartoon that I had talked about before. Stressed Eric. But, uh, no, I think this one might be worse. Twitter was going on and on about how terrible the parents were. And how they put similar bad animation parents like the reads from Arthur to shame. And like Twitter always does, it feels fully confident with only half of the story. I'm not saying that Henry's parents aren't awful. They are awful. They are dreadful and we will get to them. I'm saying that every character in this show is awful. I'm going to make this incredibly clear right up front. I loathe and despise literally every single character that I have seen in the show. I haven't seen every single episode, so maybe there's a one-shot or something that's more tolerable. But I have seen enough to know that the main characters, at least, are all abominable. Henry, Peter, their parents. Even Frankie managed to let herself go. This is the most obnoxious show that I've ever seen in my life. I'm dead serious about that one. Let, let, let's just start with the main character, Horrid Henry himself. Horrid Henry. Horrid. Yeah, you got that one right. Totally, objectively right. Let me, if I can, describe this character to you. Imagine the kid screaming at the top of his lungs while you're trying to watch a movie in the theater, while he's flicking popcorn at your head. Then, imagine a kid kicking the back of your seat for the entire time during a 16-hour airplane flight. Then imagine the kid who puts flaming dog turds on your porch twice a day every single day. Now imagine all of that, but five times more annoying. That's half as bad as Henry is in most cases. I've seen more pleasant children in population control ads. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Because, to be completely honest with you, a lot of the annoyance comes with the production quality of the show. I have no idea how it went on for 10 years, because the show's production is, well, horrid. Do you know how you make the most annoying character in history? Like, without even trying. You have it so every time he says something, anything, and I mean anything, play some loud, grating rock music under his dialogue, so you can't even make out what he's supposed to be saying. Hey, where's all the ice cream go? And so, literally all of his dialogue comes across as some terrible twang. Great! You could dub his dialogue with and it'll be just as coherent and have the same effect as what's actually said because of this decision. Sound mixers are not optional, guys. It's the biggest problem with Henry, but the background music overpowers most characters at some point. I've had a great day today. That's nice, dear. An extra scoop of one of my best customers. We need ice cream! Meet the uh, snowbots. They're very cool workers. There's like a running gag, I guess, or a, a theme, a thing. It happens in every single episode, and every single episode, it's the worst part. Because at least one character has to shout. in the most grating voice possible, when something just doesn't happen to go their way. It kinda reminds me of Dan Verse, if Dan Verse was intentionally made to spite people, and that's who our main character is. On one hand, Horrid Henry makes me want to drive a car off of a bridge. On the other hand, the show is called Horrid Henry. It's like if you called the Problem Solvers Seizure Lights, or Powerpuff Girls 2016 a complete desecration of everything you love. I mean, you're getting what you're paying for to be perfectly fair. Of course, that's just the first impressions of the show. The people who actually watch the show and know it better know that Henry gets more pleasant and actually tries to be good as the show goes on. And this is when the show gets bad to them. Because the better that Henry gets, the worse the show is. Because everyone still treats him exactly like the season one menace. It gets to be an increasingly serious problem as the show goes on. Later on, there's even an episode called How To Be Good. Henry does, like, one bad thing in the entire episode. He feeds some gross slop to a cat, which doesn't even make it sick or anything. Other than that, Henry tries to be good for the entire episode, hoping that he'll get rewarded with takeout. Or takeaway. British show. And while he doesn't exactly succeed in learning to be better behaved, he doesn't do anything else immoral or wrong. He spends most of the time sleeping. And then the episode ends with his brother, Perfect Peter, making the exact same slop, so no takeout. Because comedy. 
Also, the running gag of this particular episode is that the great aunt keeps misgendering Henry and thinking that he's a girl. Hello, Henrietta. Let's see what that big sister of yours is up to. Peter, why don't you come with me? And Henrietta, you can do the washing up. It actually gets really uncomfortable really quickly. I thought that maybe this was just a written in another time deal and this was an artifact from like the 90s. But no, this particular episode came out in 2018. There is a way to do these gags without having it come across as borderline offensive. I mean, the closest comparison is a Christmas story. Aunt Clara had for years labored under the delusion that I was not only perpetually four years old, but also a girl. It worked there because the movie didn't keep hammering this in constantly. It came across as just an out of touch relative. Whereas a lot of the times stuff that happens to Henry comes across as legitimately abusive. Like the episode isn't just that the great aunt is calling Henry Henrietta. It's having him doing all of the cleaning up. It's having his brother Peter taking gleeful delight in what's going on. It's presenting Henry with an article from a magazine that for some reason gives advice that girls would get in like the 1950s. The whole episode just feels very wrong when you watch it from beginning to end. I'd say that the show has implications of this being a horribly abusive family, but that would be an incorrect statement. There are no implications. That is just point blank what the show is about. It's an animated adaptation of Dysfunctional Family Circus. Don't tell me she was interested in Henry. She can't have been. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Yes, I know the kind of character that Henry is. I know who he is and what he's capable of and what he's done. I reiterate, what the fuck is wrong with you people? You want another comparison? Take a look at The Simpsons. Bart is, well, Bart. He can do worse things than Henry in some episodes. But what's the worst thing that Marge has ever said to or about Bart? I'll give you a hint. It's nothing close to the things that these parents say to Henry on a daily basis. The show kind of has a chicken and an egg problem here. I think what the show is trying to convey is that the parents are at their wits end with a child who is a rampant, uncontrollable demon from hell. The problem with that is that this kind of dismissive garbage attitude is exactly what creates kids like Henry. You treat a kid like these two do to Henry. That kid is either gonna get very depressed or they're going to become Henry. But wait, we also have Peter in the picture. Perfect Peter. He's well behaved and uptight and never gets into the trouble that his brother does. Surely that means that it was Henry that was acting out beforehand and this isn't the parents' responsibility at all. Peter's existence at all more or less solidifies the abusive family angle because this is the exact perfect dynamic of an actual abusive family. The stereotype is what? The adults just beating down on all of the kids equally. That happens sometimes, but it's not always how it happens. A lot of the times, one kid is treated as the golden child, the one who can do nothing wrong. The one that the unfavored child is constantly forced to compete with. The one the unfavored child constantly gets asked, why aren't you like them? And the fact that Peter constantly takes joy in Henry getting his consequences characterizes him completely towards that portrayal. I can't see Henry's parents as anything other than the worst things imaginable. I mean, if you want to see clips of Henry's parents just being horrid in their own right, you can find compilation upon compilation of them doing just the worst things possible. Top result, almost 50 minutes long. How could you be so horrid, Henry? You've disgraced the entire family and you've made your brother look like a complete idiot. He's not the one who forgot their kid on a road trip. Yeah, this show has a Home Alone parody. Home Alone worked because one kid got lost in this massive family that was just a little bit absent-minded. Tweedledee and Tweedledick here sometimes forget that they have a second child. I can't believe we're in this traffic jam now. This is all your fault, Henry. Did you hear me, Henry? <gasps> What's the matter? It's Henry. He's disappeared. <laughs> Seriously, I must reiterate, like what the actual fuck here? I try not to make claims like this anymore. I did that a lot way back when and it's probably lost a lot of a punch, but if I were to write a cartoon explicitly to showcase a horribly abusive family, like in a realistic way, this would be how I would do it. Like point for point. Of course, I wouldn't do that because it's incredibly uncomfortable. If you've had certain life experiences, this show will hit close to home in the worst ways possible. It was Peter's fault. He sprayed me. Don't tell lies, Henry. It's true. I sprayed him. Well, Henry, you should have got out of the way when Peter was watering the flowers. And once again, to be as fair as I can, there are a ton of cartoons about abusive or dysfunctional families, or at least have abusive or dysfunctional families, and they get away with it. Fairly Odd Parents, Rick and Morty, sort of, Family Guy, The Simpsons, F is for Family, most adult cartoons, really. 
But in all of these cases, even in the worst cases that I can think of, these shows tend to have some self-awareness. Like, the writers know that these families got problems. Even Family Guy. With episodes like Seahorse Seashell Party, it's not pretending what's going on is normal or even deserved, but chicken and egg. It feels like the show is written with the perspective that the parents were just given a demon spawn and have to deal with that. And that makes them have the attitude that creates a demon spawn. This attitude gives them the kind of characterization that makes them some of the worst parents in animation that I've ever seen. And considering the bar that takes to meet, that's, uh, saying something. These two got Buck Cluck off the chopping block. Yes, really, I hate them that much. You gotta be ready to listen to your children, even if they have nothing to say. And if you want to suggest other methods to torture me, I mean terrible cartoons, consider signing up for my Patreon Discord server. It's only five bucks a month, and not only can you make suggestions, but you can get a heads up on a lot of my upcoming projects. And, uh, hear me complain about them firsthand. Happy New Year, everybody.